movie, inspired by true events, starts with our main protagonist, B, being rushed to the hospital after falling into a coma. The doctors examine her health while she's visited by her chaotic family. B, still comatose, decides to go back to the beginning of her story to explain how she ended up at the hospital. B's parents, Sharon and Derek, have intellectual disabilities. Derek's mental development halted at the age of 12 due to a drunk driving accident, and Sharon's brain did not fully develop, leading to the belief that she couldn't live independently. Despite these challenges, Sharon and Derek fell in love at first sight and eventually got married. Their parents were initially uncertain about their union, but reluctantly approved of it. Derek's mom, Loretta, wants Sharon to get sterilized because they believe the new couple is unable to raise a child. Sharon's mom, Peg, protests the idea, but her husband, Earl, who is Sharon's dad, doesn't want to take care of yet another child. They've been raising their intellectually disabled daughter like a child for 21 years. They decide not to take any steps for now because they believe the newlyweds are uninterested in anything romantic. Shortly after their marriage, B was born, which further increased the pressure on Sharon's parents who were providing a home for the couple. B is named after her mother, Sharon's favorite cartoon character, Bambi. In the beginning, Sharon's parents, Peg and Earl, help take care of young B. As time passes by, Earl becomes tired of becoming the only breadwinner of the family. So, he suggests Derek move out with his family. Peg wants Sharon and Derek to stay with them, as she doesn't trust them to take care of the baby or themselves. But Derek decides that they must move out and live as a family, which they do. Soon after, Derek and Sharon move to Nevada, and initially live in a van before eventually buying a house. Fast forwarding to the present, a social worker named Mary arrives at the hospital to investigate the circumstances leading to B's coma. She engages in conversations with B's family members. Continuing with the flashback, B's childhood was initially filled with joy and fun, as Sharon and Derek worked hard to provide for her. However, when B turned 10, her parents began to place more responsibilities on her. Even Derek went so far as to teach her how to drive at a very young age, just in case he was unable to do so. In exchange for learning this skill, he promised B anything she wanted, which eventually led her to get a dog she named Godzilla. According to B, they enjoyed a happy life in a trailer park initially, and later in their new home. Nevertheless, from a very young age, B had to shoulder more than her fair share of responsibilities. This included taking care of the dog, looking after herself, and even caring for her mother. During one of the driving lessons, B mentions to her father how her classmates were calling them retarded. Derek is understandably sad at his daughter having to face that and the unjust judgment of the world towards them. But he assures her that they are just special. One day, Sharon accidentally leaves the door open, and Godzilla, their dog, escapes. B, determined to retrieve her beloved pet, decides to use her dad's truck to chase after him. As expected, the 10-year-old crashes the truck, and this incident prompts a visit from child services. This is the first time she meets Mary, the social worker. During her conversation with Mary, B expresses her inability to take care of Godzilla and her parents simultaneously. Following this incident, B's aunt and uncle, Joy and Ben, contemplate the idea that it might be beneficial for B to spend some time with them. B ends up spending the summer at her aunt Joy and uncle Ben's house which is a disorienting experience for her, as she's not used to someone else taking care of her. When she has a near accident in the swimming pool, her uncle realizes that B needs more parental guidance and support. Joy and Ben decide to take on a more significant role in B's upbringing, mainly focusing on her education. Consequently, B starts going to a private school where she becomes best friends with Nia. She does really well in her studies and even joins the track team for extracurriculars. However, she continues to be a victim of bullying even in high school. B is mostly victimized by Astrid, the belle of the school. One day during lunch, B is approached by a handsome kid, Ethan. He tells her that he saw her drowsing in biology class, so he hands over his notes to her. After Ethan leaves, Nia notes that Ethan might have taken a liking to B. She also shares what she knows of Ethan, that he is a cancer survivor and the son of rich parents. 
B eventually ends up dating Ethan after connecting with him at a party. She continues to ace at school, but she's constantly having to worry about her parents and whether they can take care of themselves. As B reaches her senior year, her guidance counselor, Mr. Vasquez, persistently encourages her to apply to college. According to him, she has the necessary grades and extracurricular achievements to attend college, but initially, she only submits applications to a couple of community colleges under pressure. Despite having the potential to earn scholarships or financial aid, B is hesitant to even contemplate leaving her parents. She firmly believes that her parents depend on her for physical, emotional, and financial support, and fears they would not be able to manage without her. Still, Mr. Vasquez asks what she is most interested in. B tells him that she loves astronomy. Without wasting any time, he tells her that she should look into the UCLA's astronomy program, which best suits her interest. Later, after finding an old hat her uncle gave her, B realizes she wants to attend UCLA and decides to initiate the college application. As B starts spending more time with Ethan and agrees to go to prom, it puts a strain on her friendship with Nia. But dating Ethan, who accepts her wholeheartedly, does make her realize that she need not listen to others who have not walked in her shoes. During one of her part-time cleaning duties at school, Astrid, like always, speaks very lowly of B. But our heroine finally slams the bully when she puts Astrid in her place for her condescending classist remarks. As prom approaches, B starts spending most of her time outside of school working to support her family as well as buying a dress for prom. She begins by putting aside a small amount of money each paycheck so that she can fulfill her responsibilities as well as wishes, which also includes going to Disneyland. After having enough savings, she shops for a dress with Nia. Nia seems to be pretty mad at B for spending less time with her nowadays. The two girls eventually get into a fight, causing Nia to leave B alone at the store. Meanwhile, Sharon, unaccompanied by anyone, goes to the grocery store because she craves her favorite sweet. Just then, some kids convince her to buy them beer. Sadly, Sharon gets arrested, and they also arrest Derek when he causes a scene with the police. In the case of Derek, he's arrested for trying to talk to the police about his wife's supposed crime. B, still trying on her dress, gets a call from the police station. As a result of the incident, she has to bail out her parents with the money she saved. Returning home, she is furious at her parents because, according to her, real parents aren't supposed to waste their child's savings. Things get heated up when she learns that her father lost his job last month and stopped her mother from getting disability checks. Derek believes Sharon isn't disabled, but rather special. B is frustrated and finally breaks down. She reminds her father that her mom is retarded and special is just a word people address her to make them feel less guilty about her condition. Derek ends up losing his patience and slaps B, who has pretty much built up resentment for her parents. As a result, the following day at school, B confides in Mr. Vasquez that she has decided not to attend a fancy college because she believes her parents cannot survive without her. After this conversation, she takes Ethan home and decides to skip classes. B shares her concerns with him, explaining that she feels responsible for taking care of her parents. Ethan notes that her parents managed just fine when she was a baby, and they would likely be fine if she went to college. He believes she's using them as a crutch to avoid facing the real world. B disagrees and even mentions that she might need to take care of him if his cancer were to return. Understandably, Ethan takes offense to this and breaks up with her. Despite her emotional turmoil, B manages to reconcile with her best friend. Nia was upset with B for deciding to go to prom after they made a pact not to. She goes to Nia's place and makes amends. B suggests they hang out together, but Nia now has a date to the prom. So B encourages her not to hold herself back just because B has canceled prom because Ethan broke up with her. B then helps Nia get ready for prom, and then returns home. To cope with the challenges in her life, B decides to take control of what she can by selling tickets for the school's raffle, with hopes of winning a trip to Las Vegas so she can visit Disneyland. Feeling extremely lonely, she ends up drinking a bottle of whiskey before going out to sell the tickets. In her inebriated state, 
She goes out to sell the tickets, and Andy, a schoolmate's college-age brother, offers her a ride. She accepts, but things take a dark turn when Andy sexually assaults her. B becomes uncomfortable and wants to leave the car, but Damien, Andy's friend who is driving the van, has no issue with Andy's actions. He only stops when B attempts to jump out of the moving vehicle. Afterward, B tries to walk away, but Andy follows her and pleads with her to return to the car. He starts pulling her arm, and B throws up before slipping and falling, hitting her head on the ground. Seeing her unconscious, the boys panic and drop her off outside the hospital before rushing away. B eventually regains consciousness and expresses her love for her parents and the rest of her family. After the social worker Mary conducts her review, B asks her if her family is the craziest she's ever seen, to which Mary replies that they aren't. Later that night, Ethan visits B and apologizes, and they reconcile. B is eventually discharged from the hospital and slowly recovers during her final year of high school. She manages to graduate alongside Nia and the rest of her class. Despite her initial hesitation to apply to college due to her responsibilities, B decides to have an honest conversation with her father. Derek reassures her that, like any other parent, he wants her to move forward in life. This gives B the courage to apply to the college she desires and successfully gain admission. Even her grandparents, who had been grieving their children's conditions, decide to celebrate B's achievements. On graduation day, her entire family is present for the celebration. The movie ends with a heartwarming scene where B's parents drive her to college. Derek, now working as a Lyft driver, and Sharon proudly sing a song about B going to UCLA. Her mom wears a UCLA beanie and even shares the exciting news with a Lyft passenger. In the touching credits scene, the movie concludes with real family photos and an update that B is now in her third year at UCLA.